birds are very important to America. They haul most of this nation's passengers and freight. Railroads take people where they want to go. They bring things and farms to the cities and factories. And they deliver the foods and the tools and the other finished products that we railroad engineers worry when we see boys and girls near the track. We know we just can't stop as quickly as we would like to because our trains are big, heavy. So we try to see as far ahead as possible, tools, ring our bells to keep children safe. At street crossings near schools, children are protected by police officers, junior traffic patrol. In every city, there are fine, safe places to play. There are schoolyards, playgrounds, fields, and parks where children can have fun in perfect safety. But railroad property is a dangerous playground for young people. Not long ago, five children who live in my neighborhood went down toward the railroad yard on the way home from school. They noticed a hole in the fence, and being curious, they looked through. Some of them were not quite sure that they should go in, but Glenn, the oldest boy, soon persuaded them. This was a very busy yard, with many switch engines working, cars moving back and forth, but the children never gave a thought to the danger. They had a fine old time for themselves. I guess they broke about every railroad safety rule. Glenn and Dennis threw rocks at passing cars, never thinking they might hurt men riding on them. Kathleen and Danny crawled under standing cars without realizing they might suddenly be moved at any time. Pamela walked on slippery rails. First, Glenn started climbing up the side of a car while the others watched. And then Dennis came along. Of course, he had to follow the leader. Glenn saw a railroad policeman and warned the others. Officer Conway patrolling the yard saw them at about the same time and cried how those children did run. With Officer Conway after them, but he was too far away to catch up. Dennis, in his haste, forgot his lunchbox. They all ran for the fence just as fast as their legs could carry them. They came through the fence close to where I was standing in the cab of my locomotive, and I had seen the whole thing. First, they looked as though they would run when I called to them. But then they recognized me and stayed. I climbed down from the cab. I took them back to the hole in the fence to show them just how very unsafe a place a railroad yard is to play. And as we watched, there were cars and engines moving back and forth. Up a little way from where the children had been, uh, some cars were coupled together and started to roll. And there was Dennis's lunchbox right in the path of the rolling cars. As we watched, the cars rolled right over the lunchbox and smashed it to smithereens. Now, I want you youngsters to just think what could have happened if you'd been where that lunchbox was. Now you can see that Officer Conway was merely trying to save you from danger. And you know, I think that a lot of my gray hair comes from watching you youngsters play on railroad property. I tell you, it's an awful helpless feeling when suddenly you see a bunch of boys and girls out in front of your engine and you wonder whether or not you're going to have time to stop. You know, I've been railroading for many, many years. And I'd like to tell you some of the things that I remember. One day a long time ago, young Don Walker decided to take a shortcut across a trestle. He thought it would be more fun to walk the ties than to take the path where he knew he should have gone. He just started right out across that trestle, never thinking what he would do if a train came along. 
Now, about the time I was whistling for the tunnel at the other end of the castle, young Don must have been uh, about a third of the way across. Even halfway across and way up high, Don wasn't much scared. That is, not until he heard my engine coming. And then he ran for it. I saw him, too. I threw on the air. But by the time the heavy train stopped, Don was out of sight. Don was mighty lucky. I saw him just in time, but not before he gave both of us the scare of our lives. Many switches on the railroad are controlled from a tower some distance away. The rails may close together suddenly, without warning, and with awful force. Railroad men have a safety rule. Never step on any switch. I know of one boy who was walking along a rail, and his foot slipped into the switch just as the towerman threw the rail. He was trapped. He couldn't free his injured foot. Luckily, the towerman saw him and threw the switch in front of him just in time to turn an engine that was racing toward him. I tell you, that was a close one. And that boy found out it was no fun to hobble around on crutches while the rest of the fellas were playing. One of the worst things that children do is to throw rocks. They don't see any harm in throwing rocks at freight cars. Seems like fun to watch the rocks bounce off. That's bad enough because trainmen may be riding the cars. But some children have thrown rocks at passenger trains and injured people seriously. I remember a little girl who took a train ride with her mother. It was her first long trip, and she was happy and excited. Her mother let her sit by the window so she could watch the many interesting things they passed as they were riding along. But children aren't the only ones who give me cause to worry. There are grown-ups, too, who do some mighty silly things and never realize the danger. People who race trains to the crossing have given me many of my gray hairs. They don't seem to realize that trains move on tracks and can't swerve out of the way, and trains are heavy and cannot stop suddenly. And speaking of crossings, there are proper places for people to cross the railroad tracks, and there are things to remember to make it perfectly safe. Look both ways before crossing any track. Cross only at regular crossings, obey the warning signs, and when there are flashing lights or wigwags, don't attempt to cross until they come to a complete stop. Never cross tracks immediately behind trains. There may be another coming on the next track. Well, of course, we all know that it's wrong to play on railroad tracks and in railroad yards. But what worries an engineer more than anything else is the thought of what might happen to one of you boys or girls. We're so interested in your play that you just forget where you are. You can't see an engine approaching or you can't hear a car. And smaller children, of course, they don't realize the danger. So it's up to you older children to set them a mighty good example and see that they never play on railroad tracks. Now, let's every one of us do every single thing that we can to keep all children from playing on railroad property. 